The NTSB has investigated several accidents involving a loss of tail rotor effectiveness, or unanticipated yaw. This phenomenon is a critical, low-speed aerodynamic flight characteristic that causes a rapid, uncommanded yaw that will not subside on its own. If the yaw rate is not corrected, the helicopter will continue to spin and a loss of control will occur that could result in serious injury or death. All single rotor helicopters are susceptible to this phenomenon and can occur in all modes of helicopter operations. Clint Johnson, Chief of the Alaska Regional Office of the NTSB, has a personal story regarding LTE that he'd like to share. Quite some time ago, about 20 years ago, I had an incident involving loss of tail rotor effectiveness that really changed my life. This accident, or near accident, involved a, a landing on a ridgeline that I lost tail rotor effectiveness. Circumstances were, uh, this, I was supporting a, a repeater site around the Anchorage area. My job that day was to go up to a 4,000 foot uh, repeater site on top of a mountain. And initially I was scheduled to fly a 206 L3, which has a much more a higher gross weight allowance than a Jet Ranger. At the last moment the scheduling changed, I was now assigned to a, to a Jet Ranger, and unfortunately that was probably one of our heavier Jet Rangers. This one was outfitted with pop-out floats. I still had the same load to take, the same technicians and their gear did a quick weight and balance, saw that I could do it legally and below gross weight, but very close to the gross weight of the helicopter, the maximum gross weight. We departed, we were already a little bit behind because of the, the, the schedule change, so there was a, a fair amount of self-induced pressure. You're wanting to do a good job, you're wanting to be able to get up there and, and get these guys to their site on time. So I didn't take all the normal precautions when we were coming into the landing site. The landing site is a very barren, windswept uh, mountaintop where there are no trees, no grass, no nothing to give you a feel of where exactly that wind direction is coming from. I didn't take that time because I was already behind. Again, that self-induced pressure was creeping in. While I was on approach to the landing site, you always want to leave yourself an out, whereas if you are not able to, to safely make that approach, you could dive off one side or to the, to the either to the left or the right of that landing site. I came in, set the, the torque at 100%, had the closure rate coming into the landing site, and uh, the closure rate kept creeping forward. I wasn't seeing a, uh, a slowdown in the, in the closure rate. At that point, um, torque stayed at 100%. We started falling through the approach and uh, got the low rotor RPM. At that point, it uh, had full left deflection as far as the, the, the pedal position. I started my uh, approach off to the, to the right side of the landing site and that's where basically everything started happening. I hit the stops on the left tail rotor pedal. This turn, the, the nose of the, air, of the machine continued to the right. And at that point, we made probably four or five revolutions around and it seemed like it was getting worse and worse and worse. Uh, luckily, I was able to get away from the hill and start downhill. And I was able to actually lower the collective, which slowed the rotation down and then was able to get regain some airspeed uh, and then uh, again regain control of the machine. But it was very, very close. Uh, at the end of the day, we probably made probably five or six revolutions. Don't really know exactly how many. Uh, the thing that really sticks in my mind is the, the, the noise of the machine, the transmission being drugged down and, and kind of the, what, what I would classify as the death throes just before the, the accident happened and luckily we were able to, to regain control and uh, promptly landed at the base of the mountain and checked the machine to see if it was okay. But it was a very um, enlightening moment for me. It changed my life as far as uh, it taught me that nobody is immune. Um, you know, all those human factors lined up and almost caused an accident. According to the FAA Rotorcraft Flying Handbook, to prevent unanticipated yaw in helicopters, be aware of your surroundings and the wind direction at all times, especially in high workload areas when flying along ridge lines and around buildings and when hovering in winds of 8 to 12 knots. Avoid tailwinds below an airspeed of 30 knots. Avoid out of ground effect operations and high power demand situations below 30 knots. Maintain power on rotor RPM. Monitor the amount of left anti-torque pedal being used. 
If insufficient pedal is available, you may not be able to counteract an unanticipated yaw. Conduct a thorough pre-flight planning assessment and stay below the helicopter's maximum allowable gross weight. The best way to prevent an uncommanded yaw is to never let it happen in the first place. Stay alert and don't get caught off guard.